Ah, yes, the day has come. It has finally arrived. We have reached the point where a star player, a productive player that could be on a contending team who was recently toiling away on a team with no direction has been traded. It's that day we assume is coming sooner or later, we just don't exactly know when. I am looking at you, Dame. Hopefully we have that conversation in due time. Anyway, Bradley Beal, yes, if you have not heard, he is being sent of all places to the Phoenix Suns for Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, second round picks, and pick swaps. That is all it took. And if you're curious why maybe you haven't been paying attention to this stuff, Bradley Beal essentially controlled a good portion of the deal. Because of his no trade clause, he could look at a proposed trade and basically be like, uh-uh, that's too many players coming back. I don't want to go to a depleted team. I'm not doing it. How Bradley Beal ended up with that much control, like Bradley Beal is a good player, but how Bradley Beal ended up with that much power, I don't know. It was also a super max contract. He signed that Supermax extension less than a year ago, so the Wizards were in a position where probably, you know, two or three years ago they could have traded Bradley Beal and got a haul back, got some good draft picks to restock with, some good players, but because they gave him all that money and all that power, there were very few teams who really needed to swing for the fences like this, and to be honest, I didn't think that the Phoenix Suns were one. They were actually not in the five teams that i listed where i thought he was going but either way the wizards did not have a whole lot of say in the matter hence why the only thing they are really getting from this deal is the ability to get off of beal's contract which some would call bad it's just look if you're the wizards and you're not contending and you have a guy with that much money for that many years it's pretty useless and you end up in no man's land so now they get to <sighs> I guess restart to really slow restart for them but uh yeah I I just can't even explain the rationale behind giving him that contract instead of just having moved him years ago I whatever either way the more important news here is that he is the newest member of the Phoenix Suns who did not have to give up DeAndre Aiden in this deal so as it stands I believe the four players they have under contract are Beal, Durant, Booker, and Aiden after that, they've got to make decisions on who they're bringing back from the bench. Obviously, with these contracts, they don't have a whole lot of flexibility to fill out a supporting cast. So that immediately raises questions like, are you just going to keep Aiden, who hasn't really seemed like he wanted to be a member of the Suns, even though he came out and said he did. Players say a lot of things. I'm pretty sure Beal said that he was going to be in Washington for a long time. Anyway, you get the point. Are they going to turn Aiden into pieces or are they going to say, you know what? Maybe running Biombo and Jock Landell and whoever else as a big is not that good of an idea in the same conference as Jokic. Of course, Aiden isn't really a match for Jokic either, but just in general, I, maybe they want to keep him. When Aiden is playing at his best, it's, it's close to like a fringe star, fringe all-star level. If you're no longer familiar with Beal's game any longer and you've just been going off of what you heard, I'm here to tell you he is still a good player. He can still create for himself. He can still get to the rim. He can play off ball. So when you're looking at a big three of guys that are mostly going to be using the ball, his skill set does fit. It is going to be a nightmare for teams to have to deal with two of three of these players always being on the floor. But look, I was having this conversation around two or three hours before the trade happened today where... I was saying Beal, Booker, Kevin Durant, and Walmart workers is not a super team. Now, Beal, KD, Booker, and Aiden reaching more of his potential, that's a, that's a really, really good start. You obviously want to bring as much shooting and defense around that as possible, so I would be surprised if we saw them lose a Kogi or at least try not to retain him. Same thing with Terrence Ross. But as far as additions that we can't foresee right now and looking in the market, once again, there's going to be a lot more favorable money situations for guys that are looking for a landing spot right now. So it's a lot of lifting for these three, okay? Throughout the regular season, when you get to the playoffs and lineup versatility starts to matter, this is a lot of lifting. One of Bradley Beal or Booker are basically going to have to probably log some minutes at point guard throughout depending on what they get. On one hand, it does beg the question, if you were the Suns knowing that you were about to move on from Chris Paul and you kind of saw a little bit of what you had from Booker and Durant in the playoffs, what were you better off doing? Going and getting one of the best assets available on the market or trying to spread it out a little bit amongst guys that can be a supporting cast? 
personally, even though I have many of the same questions, I think that if you can get Bradley Beal for your rapidly aging point guard, a bench player, and some picks that you don't care about, you probably do it. You do it and you worry about the rest later. Given the nature of this type of big three, you obviously allow for an adjustment period once the regular season starts because just looking at the off-ball talents here of Bradley Beal, I assume he's probably going to be taking the most sacrifice. This is not like the trios that normally include a big man where you already know he's going to be taking the biggest cut. But once it hits its stride, uh, it goes without saying these three are probably going to be pretty lethal on the offensive end right now we just don't have enough information about the roster to really see what else they're going to be able to do with the suns making their second big splash in about four months the last thing i will say for them is that i understand why you go ahead and make this move we had already talked about that window kind of closing with chris paul you could see his regression kd's getting up there in age as well you don't have forever that is why you go ahead and say if you can make a trio you do it as for the other parties involved the miami heat i really think that was everyone's favorite being that they were fresh off of a finals where they could have used this type of shot creation it sounded like they were going to be the ones they did not get it done according to chris b haynes they are shifting their focus to damian lillard who is uh apparently on the offseason that he might actually be looking for a move in so we would keep an eye on that and the one reason this trade hasn't actually been finalized yet is the washington wizards are looking for a place to unload chris paul all in one move so the clippers have emerged as a suitor for that i think a lot of us assumed he was just going to end up on the lakers but if it happens this way you could see chris paul teaming up with paul george and Kawhi leonard where they will promptly probably play like a combined 50 games as for kevin durant i guess this technically qualifies as like his third big joining of talent since the golden state warriors the nets of course what you had last year with the suns and now this new look suns i uh hope it works out for him eventually because the pictures of some of the teams he's been a part of is it's starting to look pretty crazy but yes yeah, so we will talk more about this addition for the suns as they fill out the rosters to make some more decisions because right now we just have the main faces and hopefully you've learned by now it always takes more than the main faces for these types of teams to work out so let's see where it goes let me know what you think about the bradley Beal trade let me know what you think about the washington wizards management because what the hell were they doing for the last few years if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button comment hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications every time a new video drops appreciate you all watching and i'll see you all when damian lillard gets traded